So you want to be a death knight slash blood tank slash dude who specs into warfare and necromancer in an effort to call themselves something edgy. Well, you know, don't. You're probably expecting to be Sauron with this build, but you'll end up being just a punching bag. During the day I'm a janitor, at night, I'm Mop Man. Need to sweep the streets for justice. Hear me out. I'm all for a class which sounds super metal, but it seems in an effort to, you know, balance the game, aka no fun allowed, uh, they've removed any kind of viability this class has. Before the game fully released, there were three things making this class super fun and overpowered. One, every point of retribution reflected 10% of damage taken. Two, necromancer procced on retribution, meaning every time you got hit, it would heal you. Three, reactive armor used to cost 1 AP and did 50% of your armor's damage. Now Retribution is only 5% reflected damage, Necromancy only applies to attacks that you do, and Reactive Armor is pretty much useless with a 2 AP cost and only 25% of your armor is damage. I'm not saying this class isn't viable now, I'm simply pointing out if you're looking to play as a melee fighter who does a ton of damage, always on the edge of your seat because the next hit landing determines if you live or die, oh please space god come down from Jupiter to bless me with the next hit being a crit then it's not the class you can expect. What you do get is a class that can be quite enjoyable. And the way that if your other characters tried any of the ballsy stuff you did, they would probably spam scream medic and tell you to reload the save because they've screwed up beyond belief in their positioning, while you take punishment for breakfast with each environmental effect done against you being a savory sauce to that knuckle sandwich. You're the type of guy who's personally witnessed enemy's eyes lose their twinkle as a giant icicle plummets from the heavens leaving only regret and soon enough only a pile of organs on the battlefield. Did he have loved ones? Was he one of the good guys? Did he mouth save me right before it came crashing down? You ponder this while the mage two miles away asks you if they're dead yet. If that sounds like the class for you, this guide is for you. We shall be building this sort of death knight, the one who knows only pain and sees only suffering, aka Edge Master Flash. As always, we start off with the let's be racist section, well, you, you know, in a good way. Uh, right off the bat, uh, Nina mentioned elves can be anything. Okay, the more time I spend playing this game, the more I realize elves are beyond broken. A free 1 AP and a damage increase needs to cost like half your health to be balanced, but let's not tell Larian Studios this. I think if you combine every racial passive other than this one together in one super mutated elf dwarf human lizard undead hybrid, uh, aka your mom, uh, Self-sacrifice would just about beat all the rest out, and that's only because Corpse Eater carried them there with flavor, pun intended. And elves also have that skill. But hey, there's only one elf you can recruit, and we made her a summoner, so no regrets. Humans make good warriors. Uh, critical strike chance actually matters, sort of, on our Death Knight, as he has no gimmicks that deter from utilization. Encourage is useful, mostly because you'll be moving quite a lot to get from enemy to enemy, which can leave you with an odd number of AP most times, making it not a waste to use in combat. Plus, roleplaying wise, it actually makes sense for the morale guy being the one who doesn't flinch when he takes a two-handed sword to the head. Are you going to complain about being covered in oil after seeing that? Uh, you know, probably not. Other than that, uh, obligatory no spice comment, and let's get on to the lizards. Why would you want to cast a carpet of fire when you're going to be standing in it next turn to reach the guy you cast it on. 10% damage reduction in fire and poison are pretty lackluster as well when there's a certain race that gets better defensive stats. Uh, since you're up front, you'll most likely be attacking the melee guys anyways, so the magic defense doesn't suit you either. That's why the race you should play are the dwarves. They're short, they're covered in a beard that seems like it's attached more firmly to the armor than your head, and you can watch them dance. There's something about the masculinity of this race that screams warrior. Is it the 10% dodge chance and 10% vitality boost that actually for once applies to the character we are building? Maybe. Though I believe it's more so the ability to wield two-handed swords that are probably way more than the actual dwarf. Role playing him as a character from He-Man with every strike the dwarf makes lets him think he'll finally turn himself into a real boy. 
Uh, seriously though, not only is the 10% vitality basically a 10% resistance to every damage type to the game, but your beard grows bigger with every dodged attack. Hey Larian, is that is that next patch or the or the one after? Undeads follow the same guidelines as the races above, except that undead warriors go from being viable to dumpster quicker than this channel dying from bad content. Basically, to the same level as the other non-dwarf classes, since the play dead skill replaces encourage. Play dead is questionable in usefulness. It's up to your team to keep you alive so that you can be useful to them, and if you're casting play dead because you're about to die, chances are your teammates are gonna die instead. That's why I prefer the dwarf's petrifying touch to the undead's play dead skill. Sure, it won't scale worth a damn, but you'll find yourself in situations where the enemy magic armor is down, and you can just petrify them for a turn for 2 AP. Roleplay as Stan Bush. You've got the touch. You've got the power. Yeah, singing voice. Woo. You should be maxing strength and constitution equally, and putting a point into memory when you need it. Uh, Wits is a trap since the release because of the quote, you know, improved initiative change, uh, which means you'll move during your turn, block no matter what. I guess it just depends on which one of your characters you want to get to move first. Uh, you might be thinking, shouldn't you just max strength? While strength gives you 5% more damage, wouldn't it make more sense to also become tankier so you'll live longer, which means you'll attack more? Also, it's not a widely known thing, but one point in warfare actually gives you more damage than one point in strength. That's because every point in strength is additive and every point in warfare is multiplicative to your damage. Put points in warfare and geomancer to start. Or necromancer. I really don't know which is better early game, so when I hit level 2, when I'm off the boat, I just put the points in the other one. Uh, why? Well, the skill is mostly. Uh, geomancer has fortify, which increases your armor for the cost of 1 AP. This is great, as it also removes status effects as powerful as acid and decaying, or just stops you from flaming your team. Uh, Necromancer gives you 10% lifesteal, but more importantly the skill Mosquito Swarm. Chances are this skill will do more damage than your basic attack, will cause bleeding if they have no armor, is ranged, and will heal you. For the cost of 2 AP. It won't scale that well, so later on you can replace it with something else. What skills you should max though is a big question. I suggest getting to at least level 2 across those 3 for more skills that you could potentially learn. Uh, Warfare gives you the best crowd control skills in the game, all of which are area effects so you can keep making Space Jam references. It also unlocks some cool abilities like Phoenix Dive, which just makes you look like a badass as you descend from the heavens in a fiery blast. It's definitely a must have. Whirlwind gives you an area effect damage based on how long your weapon is, all for the cost of one basic attack. The point being, every warfare skill has a purpose, well except for one, that never choose in rage. You can never get this piece of crap, it costs 2 AP to guarantee critical hits for one turn. Except for some reason they made it so that it mutes you as well, which means you can't cast your abilities. So you're sacrificing an attack to deal double damage on your next one. Well, why not just attack twice? But you can use it on your allies you say, well every class is skill dependent. The rogue just gets pissed off because at the end of his turn he can't get away or turn invisible, plus he always crits through backstabs, the mage will literally become useless since they can't cast any abilities, and the ranger just wanted to use one of her 5 abilities that all do more damage than her basic attacking costs as much as 2 AP. Just skip this skill. Putting points in the geomancer will increase the amount of armor fortify and other armor increasing skills gives you. At level 2, you can learn Mend Metal, which gives armor to your surrounding allies, and a heavily nerf skill reactive armor, which does damage based on your current physical armor. But it's probably not worth taking anymore. Necromancer increases lifesteal per point that you put into it. The problem I face with the skill is that lifesteal only applies to your vitality. Chances are, if you have no armor left, and you're making a final stand with your squishy goo exposed, the enemy will probably exploit that and try to CC you. Since Retribution does not proc it anymore, you just take it till you die before you get to move. The skills are questionable as well, they are expensive to cast and set questionable status effects. For example, Death Wish, the lower your health, the more damage you do, based on a percentage of your health. But it costs 2 AP. Uh, let's say we are at a half health, we get a 50% damage increase by casting the spell and then using 2 AP to cast it. Uh, then we can attack again for 2 AP. Uh, we just did 150% damage. If we normally attack twice, we would have done 200%. If next turn you attack again, the buff damage is at 300% and the normal 3 attacks are also equivalent to 300%. Who really wins here? 
Not only that, but you take piercing damage each turn you have the spell on and it only lasts two turns itself. You're better off just hitting three times and drinking potions to heal yourself and not, you know, kill yourself. The only useful skill for a warrior here is living on the edge because you can literally make someone invulnerable for two turns and that's a game changer. That's why I personally would probably just max warfare after getting two in Geomancer and two in Necromancer. There's a talent called Picture of Health which increases your vitality by 3% for every point of warfare making this skill doubly as useful. Speaking of talents, Comeback Kid, Hothead, and Opportunist are all must haves for your character. Resurrecting after you died, 10% increase in accuracy and critical strike chance, and just simply attacking enemies if they try to flee from you are all useful for this type of character. Living Armor is a scrub trap. It does not proc off of necromancy and I so wish it did, uh, so you will not get the extra magic armor every time you hit a person. So in character creation, just grab Battle Ram, Come On and Slam, and Mosquito Swarm while grabbing the Opportunist Talent since it's the best one for early game. At the next level up, get a point in Geomancer and find yourself the Fortify Skillbook. From then on, it's pretty much just GG Nori. Uh, weapon choice, I suggest being one-handed with a shield, no matter how lame it sounds. Uh, the shield skill gives you ability to recover your physical armor and magic armor, with the potential of completely turning around a battle encounter. Pro tip, if you're in a fight with someone with no armor, but have no CC left and they're about to kill one of your teammates, de-equip your shield. You will now be one-handed, and this gives you the Sucker Punch skill, which for 1 AP will knock down an enemy. You're welcome. In combat, you're all about just going ham and doing whatever the hell you want to do. Uh, do your teammates want to win that encounter? They better support your ass, because you're the carry. Nothing you do is a mistake, because you're the legendary death knight. Or some could say, a beast. Obligatory like and subscribe. Uh, last video two days ago, I said we were at 50 subscribers. Uh, that number has now jumped to over 250. Uh, thanks for all the support I'm getting. I'm trying to make every new video just a, a little bit better, so soon we'll reach slightly below average status. Thanks again, and uh, see you in the next one.